Belgium on Latin Enhanced Content Application and Analysis of the National Health and Nutrition Examination Survey Data. For our conference today, we have a hashtag. So if you're on Twitter, please use hashtag Enhanced 2020. Before we start, I would like to explain how we want to communicate with you. So first, let me introduce our moderators, Perry and Ra. Uh, Kerry is a clinical informationist at West Medical Library, and Ra is basic science informationist. When you have a question for a speaker, please use Q&A box. And then Ra will moderate after the speaker is done. And then anything else, please use chat box. Kerry will moderate. And we will also use chat box to communicate with you and we'll also send useful resources through chat box. Now we want to know, okay, that's one more question, one more emphasis about q &A. Please tell us your affiliation. It's based on the number of registrants. So number one residents are coming from Johns Hopkins School of Public Health and then School of Medicine and Nursing. And we have a fair number of folks coming from NYU, uh, thanks to Dr. Stella E, who is one of our speakers. And we also have several from Towson, Harvard, and NIH, and other institutions. If you choose other, you can use chat box to write your institution. Kevin, if, you, if we have results, can you show us? Uh, it looks like a few other people are still voting, so I, I can't close it just yet, so we'll give it a, a minute. About 85% of people have voted. And for those of you who have not voted, um, you should be able to see a polling uh, question, and that is open right now. And many of you ask about recording. The session will be recorded, and all the residents will get notification when, they're, when the recording is ready. And those slides will be also available as well. We'll see the results. Should we go to the second poll, Kevin? So second question is, we want to know how much experience you have with enhanced data. So if you never heard of it, but came here because it sounds interesting, that's number one. Never heard of it, never used it. And then if you have some experience, you play with it, you know how to find the data, you search the variables. That would be number two. If you are familiar with the data, but have not either you know, presented in a conference or published, that would be number three, third option. And if you have publication, that will be fourth option. Seems like just a few more people are still polling. So we have a lot of never used. This is fantastic because our first speaker, Yutaka, will talk of, give an extensive overview of Enhance. For those of you who have published, I would love to hear from you in case we do another Enhance symposium next year. I'm always recruiting speakers and introduce our first speaker. Our first speaker is Dr. Yutaka Aoki. Yutaka is a senior service fellow at the Division of National Health and Nutrition Examination Surveys at National Center for Health Statistics. He's an environmental epidemiologist, cross-trained in biostatistics and toxicology. Yutaka is Hopkins alum, yay, with his PhD from Environmental Health Sciences and Master of Health Science from Biostatistics. Today, he will give an extensive overview of NHANES. If you're interested in learning about NHANES, this will be a great opportunity for you. Yutaka? Thank you for the nice introductions. I uh, wanted to start my talk uh, uh, by mentioning that I was a user of NNH data, like some of, you, some of you are and hopefully will be. And uh, 15 years ago, I you know, first analyzed NNH data. And uh, then uh, about eight years ago, I started working for NNH. And I'm still using it and finding more uses and having more ideas. So I, I hope you, you'd find something of a similar uh, experience uh, in the future. Um, 
Uh, so I will cover a lot of information, which I hope to be useful for you as you consider using enhanced data for your research. Here's the outline of my talk. Uh, uh, it, most of the information I cover can be found in uh, our Enhance webpage. So, but you really don't need to remember this. You know, just type in Enhance in any search engine, and usually the Enhance uh, page will come up at the top of the results. Uh, so, goal and history. Enhance National Health and Nutrition Examination Survey it's designed to assess the health and nutritional status of adults and children in the United States. The survey is unique in that it combines interviews and physical examination. And really the key word here is examination. And hence provides US population based estimates of health conditions, including awareness, treatment, uh, control of selected diseases, nutritional status and uh, diet behaviors, environmental exposures, many of which are based on uh, the objective measures coming from uh, examination, uh, say uh, blood pressure, uh, BM BMI, uh, iodine in urine, blood lead, these all come from examination. Most of the collected data available for free download and not just this estimate is est providing estimates, uh, estimates for this, there are much more uses for enhanced data. Brief history of enhanced. Uh, it was started in 1960 as a national health and examination survey covering only adults. And then in 1971, as you can see the acronym acronym was got longer with N in it, N for nutrition. And uh, H Haynes, uh, the first H for this uh, was for Hispanic, but all these other uh, uh, in Haynes earlier surveys are, co are covered, uh, you know, in uh, participants uh, of any race or uh, Hispanic background or ethnicity. Age ranges, as you can see, expanded over years. And uh, the, uh, it used to be these earlier enhance were periodic. But starting with 1999, it became continuous with the two year cycle. And it covers, it's been covering all ages, although some of the data were not collected for uh, some age groups. Overall design of enhance. Enhanced sample represent US civilian non institutionalized population residing in 50 states and DC. About 5,000 people are sampled each year. Oversampling is uh, performed to allow reliable estimates for subgroups such as Hispanics, non Hispanic blacks, older persons, low income whites. And starting uh, 2011, Non-Hispanic Asians also have been oversampled, oversampled. and uh, Stella will talk about more about this, I think, later in her talk. Enhanced some uh, stage probably some probability sampling design, uh, meaning that uh, count counties, the locations selected in at the first stage. And in the subsequent uh, selection of the uh, lower uh, you know, uh, units of analysis, segments, household, and then survey persons, participants are eventually selected. Data collection step started with uh, sending uh, advanced letter to the prospective participants and screening is done with informed consent. They may go, in, uh, go through informed interview and with further consent, they may take part in exam component of the enhance. So uh, screening is done at the doorstep of the prospective participants. And uh, as I said, if in, uh, consent is obtained, move on to the traditional computer assisted personal interview, CAP interviews. Household interview uh, uh, collect data on various health conditions health-related behaviors and exposures, health care utilization, 
prescription medications and dietary supplements. Uh, so in the second uh, component of examination is uh, performed at uh, mo mobile exam center or MEC, which consists of uh, four trailers, one, two, three, four, and inside of it uh, like this, you know, many rooms, uh, but uh, just to emphasize is that some of the interviews also are conducted as a part of MEC. Uh, I'm going to take you through a quick virtual tour of MEC. It's going to be very uh, quick, but uh, and uh, I don't know, some components pictured are not performed with every survey cycle. Reception area, cardiovascular health, uh, hearing and vision, anthropometry and body composition. Some image like this are uh, collected for whole body, uh, muscular strength, which is actually grip strength, uh, private um, interviews for dietary uh, co uh, behavior and uh, also some other uh, components, or health, respiratory health, laboratory, some blood and other samples are collected and processed. Uh, uh, some laboratory tests are, are performed at, at the, in the MEC on the spot, pregnancy test and the co complete blood count and uh, the rest of the samples are processed and sent to CDC and other labs. About 500 assays are, are performed. Other laboratory tests include biochemistry profile, nutritional biomarkers, diabetes, lipids, uh, C-reactive protein, hormone tests, infectious diseases, and also uh, it, some environment exposures are measured using biomarkers in blood uh, or, or urine, such as metals, pesticides, various other chemicals. Some of these are measured in pooled samples, allowing uh, assessment of time trends and estimation for select uh, 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 race, Hispanic origin, sex, age groups. Uh, so there are lots of data. How, how do you know what data are available? What variables are available? You can search variables or browse Enhance website. Uh, if you go to our uh, Enhance site, on the left side, there are many tabs and one of them, one of them is uh, search variables. And you can search uh, variables using usual, you know, uh, keyword search. Also, you can, on the left-hand side, another tab Another tabs, other tabs are uh, uh, for web pages for specific to uh, two, two year cycles. And uh, so you can go there and look at the documentations. And uh, I think Megan will have some examples of this later in her talk. Uh, serum, plasma, urine, DNA, these are the specimens uh, maybe uh, uh, stored uh, of, uh, for future research with separate consent from participants. Uh, it takes about three hours and a half to go through the exam for adults and teens. This is average and it takes longer. So it's somewhat burdens burdensome for certain people such as old people. Uh, for children, it's one to two hours. But as you can see, uh, participants, uh, you know, uh, uh, really invest their time and efforts to take part in. And uh, what's the participants for the, uh, uh, I mean, what's the benefit for the participants? Uh, so certainly there's uh, the one benefit is they get the results. At, on the spot at, in the, uh, at the MEC, they may uh, find out they have high blood pressure. I have two carries or as soon as the abnormal bodies are encountered in laboratory tests, uh, participants are informed and they can also call for STD results in a, a, a secure manner. They also get final reports. What else? They also get, participants also receive new remuneration, cash remuneration for time and effort and the transportation costs are uh, reimbursed. Non-participants' parents receive remuneration for child or children. Uh, additional remuneration for other components too. So, um, so we 
uh, make efforts to uh, have in increase the participation rate, but the response rates for enhance has been unfortunately decreasing. Uh, uh, like uh, many other surveys, uh, enhance used to have uh, more than 80% uh, response rates, but in the, la in the recent years, it's been declining and uh, in the most recent years, it has come down to about almost like a 50%. Uh, this, uh, as you can imagine, is a very serious issue we'd like to um, um, just keep concerned about. How data are used? Uh, uh, here are some uh, uh, previous contribution examples. Pediatric growth charts are based on enhance. Blood pressure guidelines are based on enhance. For blood lead, current CDC reference value, five microgram liter per deciliter for age one to five, also were uh, based on enhanced 2007 through to 2040, 2010 data. It was actually the value five was actually a uh, 97.5 uh, percentile value for this age group. And it's actually, as you can see, it has actually no direct health relevance. Uh, 132 healthy people, 2020 objectives were based on enhance. Lots more uh, for the sake of time, I skip that and move on to the topic of, so what kind of enhance studies you might, uh, you might, you might uh, carry out. It could be descriptive or analytical in a different context, such as change over time, comparisons by group, for, for minority demographic SCS and for minority health, uh, Stella E will uh, talk more about in later uh, in her talk later. Design could be cross-sectional and longitudinal. Actually, longitudinal. I will come back to this. It may come as a surprise for you because enhance is, is a cross-section survey. But um, you know, in many of these studies, they are usually they are underlying uh, independent variable, independent variables and covariates. There are a lot of choices for these variables in, in hands. Okay, so now go th let's go through some, just some examples. This is change over time, hypertension, another change over time for HPV, uh, the New York Times headline uh, read, HP vaccine is credited in full fall of teenagers infection rate. Group comparison, this is a cross-sectional uh, comparison and uh, uh, sort of a uh, shameless personal plug. This is, I was a, a senior author for this uh, article in which we, comp uh, we uh, described the blood level levels of the uh, children living in hard assisted housing. Com and we compared the blood levels to the children living in, not in uh, hard assisted housing and living somewhere else. And we found that hard assisted children living in assisted, hard assisted housing actually had, a, had lower blood levels, uh, you know, con adjusting for uh, uh, their social economic status and other important co potential confounders. Here's another example. Again, uh, personal plug. Um, uh, I was the uh, lead, lead author for this. Um, we looked, we found that uh, blood lead uh, is linearly associated with uh, cardiovascular disease mortality risk. This was longitudinal and uh, based on uh, 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 mortality data linked to enhance. Enhance data was used as a baseline and follow up uh, outcome uh, data were obtained from other, uh, another uh, 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 data, uh, uh, which is linked to uh, enhance. Uh, the next section I, is uh, analytic and methodologic considerations. It, it is really just some tips for enhance-based research. For any uh, research, you start with searching for topic and uh, for enhance-based uh, studies, you also would like to learn what data are available for enhance. And what you really uh, looking into is what has been researched properly using enhance, 
what can be, or, or other data set, what can be researched properly with uh, enhanced data. So, and you're looking for sort of, sort of, you know, unbeaten path, so to speak. And a little difference here from other general epidemiologic studies in general is that you go from topic to, you know, search for topic and, okay, what kind of data we need to collect? But if we enhance, data have been collected. So you might have, might look at the whole thing slightly differently. Given the data available, what I can study. Another one thing I important to do is to learn how to analyze complex survey data. And you can take a course, it could be short or quarter or semester long courses, uh, or you can self teach. And I, at Hopkins, uh, actually, I think, I believe there is a, a quarter uh, a course um, uh, on uh, complex survey data analysis. And you can, uh, for simple analysis, it may be suffice to uh, go through some online tutorials. And hence, we also have uh, uh, tutorials uh, for that. One thing, another thing I can recommend you to do is that to pull out some of, some uh, previous uh, papers and try to replicate uh, findings based on public enhanced data. And I did that when I first touched uh, 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 enhanced data 15 years ago, and it's very uh, you know gratifying that you find that okay, I my estimates actually exactly matches. Um, the, the, the values in the published papers. Uh, and you might go on to consider use of limited access data, uh, which I'll talk a little about a little more uh, in, in greater length later. So uh, strength enhanced, strength of enhanced based studies, uh, these are so obvious, enhanced data nationally representative, nationally representative, so we have, you, you we have a good uh, general generalizability, and also data are collected consistently, consistent in a consistent manner. So it increases internal, uh, improves internal validity. But the very practical advantage is that, you know, there are lots of data for free for you to use. Some limitations, um, uh, one limitation to note is local estimation will be limited and hence goes only uh, about 15 locations per year, and no geography at the state level or below uh, disclosed. Uh, sample size may be small for some group analysis you wanna, you might wanna do. There are some manipulation of data to to um, um, to uh, protect confidentiality, like top coding for age and some other data masking are done in public data. And as I mentioned earlier, declining response rates have been uh, of uh, many, many of in ourselves and of users' concerns in, uh, in recent years. Uh, here are some analytic considerations. Just two here. Uh, I mentioned top coding, and you can, for, uh, for age, you can, and the solution will be categorized, use categorized age, you can impute. You can also uh, use limited access data, uh, which are recorded, uh, uh, which provides exact age and so forth. Another one just came to mind, my mind as I prepare this uh, presentation is uh, when analyzing data from multiple surveys, there's a concern for confounding due to year of survey. For example, suppose you are looking at the two variables X and Y, and they both have decreasing time trends. And you might see X and Y are in, you have an associated with each other, but if you look at uh, data for each survey, there's no association. So you know that. Uh, so the time of survey is yeah, actually uh, operating as a confounder. Solution, uh, one easy solution is to adjust to a survey cycle, like for example by including survey cycle indicators in regression. There are many more. I uh, but I. Uh, I'm gonna go to the next one. So next important thing to consider is complex survey data, the design of enhanced. And it's in general, it's better to avoid using methods for simple random sample. And there's exception to this um, as 
for sof some sophisticated users can deviate from this with a certain justification for sure. This will be, uh, 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 Josh will talk about this later in greater detail. But typically, typically complex survey appropriate extensions of usual random, simple random sample uh, methods are available. So it's highly recommended you run this uh, complex survey method and use those. Typically, usually you just need to uh, pay attention to two to important, two design considerations. One is weighting and uh, the other is variance destination. And the uh, implementation of this could be relatively simple. For example, uh, for weighting, you need to choose proper sampling weight. And uh, for example, instead uh, you can just put in the weight uh, uh, variable like this or and uh, variance estimation also uh, strata and PSU could be uh, specified properly. Limited access data can be accessible through research data center or RDC. I put accessible in quotation marks because some data may not, may be only used as matching variables and cannot be directly accessed even at the RDC. Uh, how to do this? Uh, this RDC is a uh, based research is proposal, uh, goes through proposal process. You submit the proposal to be, to be reviewed for disclosure on disclosure grounds. And excuse me. Uh, and uh, and you, once the proposal is approved, you'd conduct analysis at the RDC and retrieve results, for, which we call sometimes call output access acceptable on disclosure ground, but uh, uh, no raw data could be taken out from the RDC. There's some user fees. There are many RDC locations across the country. And uh, here I listed three that's nearby. I mean, from near, uh, not far away from Hopkins, downtown DC, Rockville and Hyattsville. RDC may be closed uh, during COVID-19 epidemic. Uh, types of limited data include sensitive data such as drug use for uh, adolescents, personally or geographically identified information such as you know old age values, uh, detailed ethnic origin ancestry, geocode. As I mentioned, matching variables. Uh, the geocode generally speaking can be used mostly only for matching variables or merging with external data. And no geographic identifier at, at state or low uh, level can be directly accessible even at RDC. There are some linked administrator, uh, mortality, Medicare, Medicaid, social security benefit and housing assistance program of HARD. Uh, and some of these could be used for longitudinal study. Okay, latest update. Uh, so field operation uh, of enhanced data collection have, has been on pause since March due to COVID-19 epidemic. The meanwhile, we have some uh, surplus uh, or you know, some tracks which haven't been used. Uh, so we provided uh, that for for the DC government to be used for COVID-19 response. Okay, I guess this is uh, the last slide, I guess. So as mentioned earlier, you know, most of the information I covered could be um, uh, looked at again or learned more at our website. To, and you can explore variables, learn about design analysis, and use tutorials and so forth. If you still have questions, you, the best way to find more about is to send inquiry through CDC info email form, which is available from this uh, 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 website. And this is really recommended for inquiry. Um, okay, so I guess that's all I have. Uh, I would uh, entertain, entertain your question, thanks. Stop sharing. Thanks, Itaka. So um, we have a number of questions. Some relate to NHANES scope. So I'll start with those. So we have a question about um, amputation. If amputation 
is a variable or considered in the collection of data for n Haynes? Uh, there are so many data. I can't, I don't remember the data have been collected, but I may be wrong. The best way to find out is just to go to that search page and you can put in amputation in the, and uh, uh, if, if it, to see if it's have been corrected. And for future, um, if we get some questions like this, will this be uh, collected in the future? That's hard to answer. <laughs> so generally you find out when data come out and uh, there's no other good way to find out, uh, unfortunately, yeah. Okay, thank you. Um, a couple of questions relate to children specifically. Um, so a question about whether learning assessments are administered in NHANES and also right. whether there's screening for behavioral functioning in children. Uh, yeah, so again, I'm talking from my memory, so please confirm this at the website, but there have been some uh, uh, components, like some, some for like assessing the, uh, uh, you know, a a ADHD types of outcome. That's have been conducted for some, some select years. And I, I think some of them are restricted, you know, limited use because of the privacy in concern. So, so there are some such data, but I don't think it's been, uh, you know, it's been corrected every year for all children. But there are some data to use on the behavioral or developmental aspects of children. Great. Um, we had a question that relates, uh, I guess, to methodology in NHANES relating to the longitudinal uh, uh, character of NHANES. So the question relates to explaining how longitudinal analyses are possible. Is it just overall trends over time? Or is it truly the longitudinal in nature where the data on the same patients are available in different years? Yeah, so the way this works is that NHANES in these longitudinal studies for the most, in, for, for the most of the time, NHANES data are used as a baseline data to form a baseline cohort. And outcome data comes from other data sources such as mortality data that, that these are that which comes from a national death index. Our center uh, has that data set and there's some matching and the data are provided as, as a public also. Some uh, exact mortality data are uh, provided uh, at, through RDC, but some like a pre, you know, like a feasibility data, some of the sort of, you know, simple, simpler uh, data are available as public. And also some other uh, uh, administrative data I mentioned, Medicare, Medicaid, Social uh, Security, those also could be used to as a sort of, there's sort of passive follow-up uh, using those other data sets and pick up uh, outcomes such as death, or people start receiving uh, benefit for disability, which means they, they had some disability, uh, you know, episodes. Uh, so that's how, so, like I said, you know, uh, baseline uh, cohort is formed by enhance. Then other data set are used to to do the longitudinal uh, follow up. Is that? I hope that answers. Um, but uh, you can pull out some of the actual uh, longitudinal analysis uh, uh, publications. I had one, uh, but you can search for those and uh, you can see uh, read the methods of uh, those studies. You can get a better idea. Thanks. Okay, and then there are a couple of questions related to uh, data analysis. So one, I mean, you, you, you touched on this. I don't know if you want to say any more about weighting, but a question saying does NHANES require any weighting? I think you sort of addressed that, but didn't know if you wanted to speak more. Well, it's not like when the use of public data we actually can't require much. People do whatever they want to do. And uh, Joss is nodding and uh, we sometimes we summarize, but generally speaking, for example, get for, uh, producing the national estimate of something, waiting certainly is needed. 
and in order to produce a reasonable, valid, appropriate variance for those estimates, uh, uh, strata and PSU also should be considered. That's in principle. Maybe more later for sophisticated users, really sophisticated users. But for, for somebody starting to use Enhance, always should wait. So that's what my advice was. So, uh, Articulture, it's an official recommendation of Enhance also, and also MCHS. So, um, Rob and Yutaka. So, Yutaka, thank you so much for your talk. Um, unfortunately, you. <laughs> we don't have enough time to answer all these great questions. So, if you can type the answer, that would be great. We want to move on to our next speaker.